Welcome back to our IB Physics video series. This is the fifth and final video in IB Physics Topic 4, Waves, where we will be looking at the last wave phenomenon, diffraction, including Young's double slit experiment. Before watching this video, ensure you have watched our previous four IB Physics Topic 4 videos, outlining important fundamentals of waves. Diffraction is the spreading of waves after hitting obstacles or passing through apertures. This occurs similarly in all wave types. It is commonly visualised with water waves, which we know spread around obstacles. When a wave passes through a small gap, known as a slit, the wave spreads out like so. The area where the diffraction occurs is behind the obstacle, also known as the geometric shadow region. The key takeaway is that the slit width must be equal to or smaller than the wavelength for diffraction to be noticeable. This is because as the slit becomes larger, there is more space for the wave to pass, and so smaller portions of the wave are redirected. So how does this affect the wave's behaviour? Let's explain this using an example of crowds. If a crowd of people is leaving a stadium through a single door, there would be crowding through the doors, followed by a spread out afterwards. We would also see that at the point where people leave, they travel in different directions. This is very similar to our diffraction patterns, as at each point along the slit a new wave source forms, called a point source. Since this happens many times along the slit, the resulting waves collide, i.e. they interfere. Remember that constructive and destructive interference affect the intensity of a wave, called Huygens' principle. Thus, the interference pattern can be visualised using an intensity distribution. You are expected to know the intensity distribution for diffraction through one slit, known as single slit diffraction. Using three wave sources for simplicity, we see that many waves go down the centre and constructively interfere at wave junctions. This forms a central maximum with a high intensity and amplitude. To the sides of this, waves destructively interfere between wave junctions. This forms the first minima. Then, waves constructively interfere again but with lower amplitude and intensity. This repeats to form a pattern of decreasing maxima interspersed by minima. Two common sources of confusion regarding this intensity distribution are the decreasing amplitude and intensity, and the repeating pattern of maxima and minima. Let's address these. Both these trends are a direct result of subsequent maxima and minima being further away from a slit. We know from the inverse square law that the intensity is inversely proportional to the square of the distance, so amplitude and intensity decrease exponentially. We also know that with increased distance, the phase difference between two waves becomes larger, from 0 to 0 0.5 to 1. Then, remember that constructive interference occurs at each n wavelength, and destructive interference occurs at each n plus a half wavelength which forms the repeating pattern of maxima and minima. This is the basics of diffraction through a single slit. But what happens when two slits are involved? Q. Young's double slit experiment. In this, Thomas Young shone light at a double slit to view its interference pattern. It is important to note that his use of a point source was crucial to producing consistent parallel waves, as seen in water. You must describe his apparatus for your exam. A monochromatic light source, this emits a single frequency of light. Whilst waves containing different frequencies can still interfere, they produce a less clear pattern. An infinitely small source slit, this causes initial diffraction, thus converting the light source to a point source. Infinitely small double slits, like in the single slit diffraction, each acts as a new point source to produce a wave. And a projection screen, the surface where the resulting intensity pattern is shown. An alternative setup could utilise a laser directly incident on the double slit, since they are naturally point sources, negating the need for a source slit. So how does this work? Well, the mechanism is the same as with a single slit. The waves produced from each slit constructively interfere at wave junctions, and destructively interfere between wave junctions. This produces a series of equally spaced and intense maxima, separated by minima, called fringes. Note that this pattern is only seen with infinitely small slits. If the slits are infinitely small, the resulting pattern looks like this. Now that you understand the diffraction pattern, you need to nail related calculations. 
You've now reached the end of the preview for this IB Science video. If you want to check out the full video, head over to our website and select a membership plan today.